So moving right along, I would like to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Hiromi Iuchi. Uh, she is the Senior Manager of Overseas Operations for the JSS. Uh, Ms. Iuchi and I actually go way back, like tw 25 years ago, when sake was just starting to get popular overseas. Uh, and she was living in New York promoting sake. And I would go there from time to time uh, on sake promotion events. Uh, obviously, she's done a very good job in her work over there and in her work over here. Uh, today, she'll be covering a handful of topics uh, about partnerships, education, exhibitions, uh, and GSS efforts overseas. Uh, so with no further ado, Ms. Iuchi, over to you. Uh, everyone, uh, good morning and good evening. My name is Hiromi Iuchi, the Senior Manager of uh, Oboshi Operation Division of uh, JSS. I'll introduce some uh, JSS Oboshi activities today. Um, these are the topics. The sake export stats and uh, promotion strategies and activities, what we did in 2020 and our plan for 2021. I start with showing uh, sake export amount history by uh, major countries, the last 14 years from uh, 2007. You can see COVID-19 effect on the 2020. As uh, Mr. Okamoto mentioned, the uh, China is shooting up the three times increased in the last three years. Hong Kong gray line is growing up tremendously and US has been growing steady, but uh, until the COVID. Um, EU market like blue was gradually growing, but uh, also went down in 2020. This is a 2020 pandemic number. The amount total is just about 100%, 103%. In highlighted, uh, I highlighted uh, Asian countries in pink. You can see that most of Asia is uh, growing two digit despite of uh, pandemic. Hong Kong is the top. On the other hand, uh, North America and the European countries are down. Uh, US went down to a third overtaken by the Hong Kong and China. Uh, this is the export volume 2020. It went down to 87.3%. Uh, this is a recent export amount by each month, by each area during a pandemic. Um, finally, America and the EU started picking up lately. If there are more shipping containers, it could be better for sure. I know some of you are concerning about the shipping container delay problem. Uh, it's a terrible situation. It's, um, it's because of the lack of containers, apparently. Uh, Japanese government is trying to figure out what they can do about it, but uh, so far we haven't heard any solution yet. It might take uh, some time to catch up. We, the sake industry, uh, from uh, formed the council to discuss the strategy for increasing the sake export. Among sake producers and exporters and inviting some government sectors to share the information. And uh, JSS has been co coordinating this uh, council meeting and put together the report every year so that we all can share the idea and direction and everybody could be on the same page. Based on the strategy, uh, JSS Overseas Committee and the team make uh, plans. Here's some of the themes JSS has been focusing on and uh, what we are aiming for. In order to expand the sake market, first, we recognize the issues. There are many issues, but I picked these two. Um, one is about the distribution channel. Sake has a very few channels. Um, most of the sake has been sold to Japanese restaurant and people drink sake only in Japanese restaurant. And we need to go outside of Japanese restaurant and then go into the wine markets, non-Japanese restaurant. That means that sake has to appeal to a uh, wine market, the sommelier and uh, wine drinkers. Another thing we uh, desperately need is online Ishii channel. The pandemic gave us the lesson since the sake is uh, mostly sold 
at the restaurant venue. If the restaurant are closed, we don't have a means to bring sake to the customers. As for wine, they already have an online distribution. So um, I guess the damage was less. We need to start developing the issue channel for sake in a big time. Another challenge is the storage issue, the quality control. We need to raise the awareness more that sake needs to be stored in a dark and cold setting. Sake is much more fragile than a wine. I personally believe that this could be the crucial point for sake growth in the future, especially in a new market. With understanding those issues, uh, we challenge and focus on the three themes. We need to uh, tackle these three uh, things together. They are all connected and uh, work simultaneously. For uh, branding the Japanese sake as a category, we focus on developing the relationship with uh, influencers and the professionals in the wine, industry, wine industry. Um, we want all sommelier and the professional to know about sake so that they can introduce and influence their friends and customers. If they become familiar with sake, the sake can be expanded and uh, go beyond sushi and sashimi. The focus point would be the sake food pairing. We talk about that in every chance we get. And we need a B2B event, um, distribution and buyers, distributors and buyers need to be uh, influenced. We have to convince them that sake can be a selling product. For that, um, we go to uh, ProWine and uh, Bean Expo and Wine and Spirits Expo to connect our members to the buyers. We also cooperate with uh, Jetro in uh, different countries to create the business matching. And then we uh, finally, we need a B2C, B2C event as well. We need a general consumers, especially uh, wine drinkers to discover sake and wanting to buy sake without being afraid. For all of that, all of these, um, we help focus on uh, education. Sake is still a niche category. Education is the key. And I think everybody here agree with that. Here's what we have done in 2020. Because of the pandemic, there are many things that we have to alternate, but um, we ended up creating a, a lot of uh, great projects. For purpose of branding the Japanese sake as a category, we focus on appealing to the professionals and sommeliers. JSS became a partner with uh, sommelier, uh, France Sommelier Association last year. We had many um, online events targeting sommelier and professionals in Canada, England, and Germany. In Germany, we collaborated with the sommelier association as well. <clears throat> we also plan to partner with uh, ASI, the Association of Sommelier International, um, to showcase sake at the final. But um, this event was postponed to this uh, November. So we're gonna do this this year. Uh, our aim, is that the sake could become a category all sommeliers need to know, uh, to have knowledge about. Then the sake is no longer some mysterious drinks from uh, East and the sake can go on a new stage. Here's an in-person uh, event we did. Taiwan, China, and Malaysia, Vietnam, and Singapore. Um, you can tell that all these events are in Asian country last year. We couldn't do it in the West um, due to the pandemic. Uh, hopefully this year we can do it. Uh, JSS uh, Sake and Shochu Academy, uh, we managed to hold it in Tokyo in uh, last uh, February. We did many online events as well, targeting a general consumers. One thing we learned from the pandemic we, we can be very uh, creative and then we have an online tool to connect with consumers easily. That was a great discovery and then we should continue it post uh, COVID. Now this, this year's plan, this is the, as of today, it might change, but uh, we're gonna be on uh, 
Provine, uh, Provine Shanghai in China, we are gone. Uh, this will be the, our third time to participate. In North America, we'll be uh, at the Sommelier uh, Somme 360. We do it in Montreal for a sake masterclass. In Europe, we continue the partnership with the Sommelier Association of France, and uh, we work together showcasing sake for their members. In Madrid Fusion, we appeal sake to chef and uh, sommelier and uh, um, showcasing how sake can be matched with their cooking. Central Eastern Europe, we are planning to visit five countries. <clears throat> Japanese restaurant business are blooming there for the last couple of years. And then they just started uh, discovering premium sake. So we go there to provide the education. New market is very important as well. And in Japan, we are planning to have a Sakagura tour and a Sake and Shochu Academy as well. I hope you get some ideas about our overseas activities. I would like to introduce the JSS support desk. Um, they will report us what is going on in the market and we exchange information and ideas. This year, we add the two areas, uh, China and uh, Southeast Asia. And then now we have a six desk total around the world for sake. For shochu, we added two more areas, EU and China, and we have four desks for uh, shochu. So we work closely with these uh, 10 support desks. I also want to share the news that uh, JSS renewed the English website in April. We have a basic and professional page and uh, Sakagura search and uh, fact and topics. In uh, fact, on fact page, um, we have deeper and geeky information about uh, rice and starts and uh, we intended to update it as it needed. We also, um, are going to create the mailing list soon. So please go visit and uh, let us know what you think. At last, uh, SNS. In 2020, like I said, we had uh, lots of uh, online projects and webinars. We put up some of them on our YouTube page. So uh, please check it out also. So thank you very much for joining today. And I really hope that everyone stay safe and well and uh, see you soon. John. Thanks, Yuchi san Thanks very much for that, very much for that very enlightening presentation on the uh, overseas efforts and activities of JSS uh, around the world. Um, in your presentation, you had a bunch of numbers and it was interesting to me that export volume was down by about 13%, but uh, export revenue in terms of a monetary base is actually up 3% to me in 2020 over 2019. That's really interesting. That leads me to ask you though, what percent of all sake made in Japan is actually exported outside of Japan? Can you answer that for me? I thought the same, uh, same thing. So I did a little digging and uh, significant numbers are uh, well, it's apparently it's shifting towards a higher price to sake than the previous year. And uh, in China, the significant number per uh, liter unit was increased by uh, 25 percent. It's huge jump. And in Hong Kong and in Singapore, it went up by uh, 15 percent. So I think that's what is affecting those numbers. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, and what percent of all sake made is actually exported? Do you know that off the top of your head? It's about uh, 5%. About 5%. The good news is we've got plenty of room to grow. Yes. Uh, one more thing. You mentioned your alliances with the uh, UDSF in France and a couple of other sommelier organizations. Um, have you considered similar alliances with groups such as the Master Sommelier Guild and the Master of Wine organizations? Uh, Possible, um, we have to start uh, communicating, hopefully. And Excellent. then we, 
we hope that we can all work together for uh, sake. Yeah, that yeah. would be great. They really hold a lot of influence. So engaging them, I think, would be a great thing. Thank you very much for that clear answer and for your presentation today. Uh, one Thank thing I've much. encountered uh, is that every country in the world has some kind of idiosyncrasy or some kind of quirk or some kind of challenge uh, regarding importing alcoholic beverages, not just sake, but any country has their own little hassles about importing alcoholic beverages from other countries. Uh, for some, it's regulations that are challenges. For other, others, it's, it's the import tax. Uh, for some countries, it's just that the indigenous beverage that the people of that country have been drinking for so long uh, is so popular that it's hard to get a different beverage in there. In there. So I think with all of these efforts uh, that the JSS is undertaking overseas, uh, by helping uh, doing that will kind of make sake much more familiar to people, which as Yuchi san said, is part of their goal. Uh, and then we can slowly start to erode the problems that are unique to uh, each place. So again, thank you very much.